Hello everybody, I'm Scotty. Welcome back to Scotty's Clock World. We've cleaned all the parts now with our special brew that we made up and they've come up very nicely indeed. So now what we're going to do is we're going to peg out between the trundles in the lantern pinion. That pinion there is called a lantern pinion. The individual pieces of wire there are called trundles. We're going to peg them out just to see if there's any dirt left still in them. And then we're going to peg out the bushes on our plates, our front and back plates. Now this is what we normally use. It's a piece of boxwood, uh, a nice soft wood for pegging out, but because we're not using any uh, technical stuff in this series, what we're going to use is a toothpick and a shish kebab stick. However, there's a problem with them immediately. The points on both the shish kebab stick and the toothpick are very hard. The, the wood is very hard, so what we have to do to soften it up so that it'll work properly while we're using them for pegging out you can either use a piece of 80 gauge sandpaper and rough up the point or you can you can just use a razor blade just drag it along either direction and just rough it up a bit because while it's so smooth it's just going to spin round in the bushes and burnish them and it's not going to clean them so we'll run with our, our razor blade over the top there get it roughed up a bit now we're ready to start pegging out in between the trundles in the lantern pinion so we just insert the tip of the shish kebab stick at this stage the one we're using rub it backwards and forwards in between each of the trundles two or three times is sufficient so that lantern pinion is pretty clean right we'll take another one and do the same thing with that using the shish kebab stick backwards and forwards two or three times just turn the the wheel around in your hand yes well you can see there's a bit of a bit of dirt that's come up on that all right not a lot but we need to remove that before we put the movement back together again right so that's that's the wheels now we'll move over to the we'll do the front plate first we we'll do both sides of it that's the front plate there so this is where the the toothpick can come in handy because there are some small bushes in here that the shish kebab stick is not going to fit into. So we'll start off with those with our blunted end. Put it in, spin it round, spin it round. Another small one down there. You can see already a black line on there. Put it into the next one. Spin it round again. And I think, yep, that one there. We'll do the same again with that bush there. We've now got quite a serious black line on our toothpick. Turn it over, we'll use the other end which I've already scraped down. We'll do the other sides of those bushes. Spin the toothpick round. Get another one. And that one there is a small one. 
not so bad this time. There's not so much dirt on it. Another couple to go. One over here. Hmm, that brought some dirt out. You can see that there. And that one. That's that. Now we'll look at a couple of larger ones. Some larger bushings. There's one there. Run around there. Yep, you can see the black line on there. We'll do the other side of that. That's where the escape wheel pinion goes. Run that around. Turn the plate over and have a look and see what else we've got. I think that one there. Yep. Pig that out, spin it round. I've scraped most of that dirt off. We'll now look at the back of the front plate. That's one there. Put the stick in, twirl it round. Little bit of a line, not very much. And I think that's about all on that plate. Right, we've got the back plate now. Let's see what we've got. One there, spin the stick round. Yep, starting to get a bit of dirt on that. If you don't peg out your bushes, that dirt stays in there. And once you put oil on it, after a while it becomes a grinding compound and just grinds away the bushes. It doesn't particularly affect the, the pivots, it does a little bit, because the pivots are steel and the bushes are brass. It's designed that way so that the bushes wear out before the pivots. Well, a bit of dirt on that lot. All right. Now, there's another way we can remove dirt from wheels and parts in a clock movement, and that's using some of our blue tack, or in this case, white tack material. It's a cheap version of Rotoco that you'll probably end up getting later on if you do more clockwork, and how it's used. It's actually designed for using on, on watch parts, but we still use it on clocks. Is you just press it down onto the piece that you want to clean. And if there's any dirt there, it picks it up, it sticks to it. And it doesn't leave a mark or residue on the wheel. I'll do the other side. Then we'll see how much dirt we've picked up from this wheel. It could still be a bit there even though we've, we've cleaned it. We'll make sure that it's finished off with our white tack. A little bit there, not very much. But you can see there's no, no residue left on the, on the wheel. I'll put that aside. We don't really need to do any on the, on the plates. It's all just the wheels that we're worrying about at the moment. I'll run over the top of the, the escape wheel here and see what we can pick up. Just push it down in between the teeth too. Squeeze it in. Should be our last quarter, I would think. Take it out and have a look. Oh, that's pretty clean. I'll run over the other side quickly just to check. It looks like we did a pretty good job 
with our cleaning solution and the toothbrush. No, yep, that looks all right. Okay, that was easy. If you want to learn how to service, repair and restore 19th and 20th century mechanical clocks, then subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell.